Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm chatting with Jim Atkinson from Antimony Resources. In today's interview, we discuss Antimony, what the market looks like, and we get into Antimony Resources, who has a very interesting Antimony project in New Brunswick. Jim breaks down for us what the historic numbers look like for the project and what the plan is to move it forward, given that everybody's talking about Antimony. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Don't miss the Rural Symposium for Natural Resource Investing happening July 7th in Boca Raton. If you can't make it in person, that's not a problem. You can get your ticket to watch live online or on demand. We'll be there with the deep dive, so if you make it out to Boca, come say hi at our booth. If you want to sign up, click on the link in the description to get your pass. Jim, thanks for sitting down with us today. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. So let's start with talking about antimony high level. Uh, we hear about it in the news. Antimony's become this thing that uh, a lot of the, we'll say clickbaity uh, websites are talking about how it's, it's, it's going to be this metal that we need that China's really put the brakes on sending to the rest of the world. What's, what's your view on antimony? Why are you excited about it? Well, antimony, I like to call the metal that nobody knows because it's a very important metal in, in several different areas. Uh, first of all, it's a very useful fire retardant. Antimony trioxide is used a lot as fire retardant. It's used in places where, like for instance, like maybe baby furniture or, or things like that, where fire retardation is an important, important aspect. It's also used in the in the uh, conductor business and also in in uh, like solar panels, all those kinds of things. But one of the most important uses and the reason why it sort of garnered a lot of interest is the military uses. Even fire retardant aspects are used in the military. Apparently, all of the tents in the U.S. military are sprayed with antimony trioxide as a fire retardant. It's used in artillery shells and well, the military aspects are very important. And it's one of the reasons why it has become very important in the United States. The United States Department of Defense has made a statement that they will not access antimony from anywhere outside of North America. And so one of the things they've been doing is looking for you know, at sources of antimony within the United States. And so that's brought up, you know, some aspects of, of the exploration and also some aspects of why it's become a very important metal uh, in, in, well, in the United States, but also in the world. Because as you said, China, which used to be uh, exporting probably 60 or 70 percent of the antimony has cut off all exports. Most of the other exports of antimony come from Russia and of course as we know there are sanctions on that. So the world's supply of antimony is very limited outside of China and Russia. United States alone in 2023 imported 140,000 metric tons of antimony trioxide. So there's a huge demand for it and a very small let's call it a very small source. So let's talk about the source of antimony because I think that one of the first things that everybody's trying to think of when they hear about this, okay, we're probably gonna need more antimony because uh, the conventional supply chains are cut off. What's that source gonna look like? How, how common is antimony in, uh, the, in, in, in terms of deposits uh, in the US or Canada or in the Western world? Well, right now, there is no commercial production of antimony anywhere in North America. The closest that they have in the United States is a project called the Stibnite Project, which is a bit ironic because Stibnite is the name of the mineral that hosts the antimony. The Stibnite Project in, Ant in Idaho is owned by a company called Perpetua. Now that's basically a gold mine. It'll be a very large open pit gold mine. But the, I think the factor that everyone has to realize about even about Perpetua and about the Stibnite project, that gold project has been known for a long time, like a very long time. And it only got some traction in the market and, and in people's minds when they started talking about the antimony that they have. So what's happened is that a lot of gold deposits in the world and in, and in North America have started talking about the antimony that's contained in their deposit. 
The unique thing about our deposit at Bald Hill, it's a pure antimony deposit. It's not a gold deposit that has a little bit of antimony as a byproduct. This is pure antimony project. So in that sense, it's a little bit different than most of the other projects that people are talking about. So let's talk about Antimony Resources, a company that you are the CEO of. Uh, what can you tell us about the Antimony project you have? Is it another gold project with Antimony as a, as, as a byproduct? Uh, what can you tell us about it? No, it's not. It's a pure Antimony. So the mineral that we see all the time is stibnite, and we see it in massive sections in our drilling. It's pure Antimony. Now, there is a little bit of gold there, but it's not it would not be considered a gold deposit. The gold is, and golden is kind of a tracer for antimony, but we're focusing on the antimony and we're getting some very high grade. Just to go back to Perpetua, for instance, the Stibnite project, their average grade in the first few years of their production, which is what they published in their uh, feasibility study, is be grading 0.4% antimony. Our grade is 10 times higher than that at around three and a half to four percent antimony. So that's the difference. I think the other difference is that because we're pure antimony, it gives us a little more flexibility or would give a producer a little more flexibility in what they can do with the concentrate. For instance, Perpetua's concentrate will be a mixture of gold and antimony. That means that wherever they send it, the facility will have to be able to handle that mixture. For in our case, our concentrate will be pure antimony, and there's lots of smelters that could handle that just as pure antimony. The other thing about, about our project as compared to Perpetua, I'm not exactly sure what the capital cost is at Perpetua, but they've just raised a bank uh, funding of $2 billion. And that's the kind of order of magnitude I think they're looking at there. Our, our capital cost will be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. It'll be a small operation, small underground operation, producing high-grade antimony, and that'll be the major difference. Okay, so which province is it in and how much infrastructure is nearby? So it's in the province of New Brunswick in eastern Canada. It's surrounded by roads. We're 45 kilometers away from a deep sea port at St. John. Um, you know, it's really, the, the, the area itself is really forest land and sort of, let's call them marginal farms. All the surface rights in the area are owned by you know, by the locals, but the largest landowner in the area is Irving Woodlands and Irving, the Irving Company, big company, but they're very used to dealing with mining companies. So we have no issues with land ownership. You know, we've made a deal with them and I, I like to tell everybody it's kind of a funny deal. So the deal is that if we cut down a tree, we have to take it to one of the Irving mills and they'll pay us for it, which seems kind of backwards to what I'm, I'm used to dealing with. I mean, we'd have to pay stuff. And we, of course, wouldn't do that. If we had to do that, put in a road or something, we would hire a local logger, obviously, to do that. That's not what we do. But it just struck me that that was the deal that, that we had to sign with them. So they're very, they're very friendly with mining. In fact, they have mining interests uh, in different places. So they understand what we're doing and, and how we're gonna do it. And they also understand what the potential, let's call them impacts could be. And they're very happy with, with that, so. So if I'm a retail investor and I'm sitting here and I'm watching this interview, I'm probably thinking, okay, I wanna do my homework. What, what are good antimony grades? What, what do those look like? Uh, what can you tell us about just, do you have any uh, high level um, numbers you can give us that would, 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 would deem a project economic? Well, I guess the, the only thing to compare it to would be the Lake George antimony deposit, which was also in New Brunswick and operated for many years during ups and downs of prices. And its average grade was around 2%, one and a half to 2% antimony. So again, we're, we're sort of in the range of double that. Okay. I think the other thing to take a look at is it, it just so, the way it would be mined would be just like a simple small gold mine. So you'd have underground mine, the, the mining methods would be very simple. Um, and so from that point of view, I think the economics would be fairly would be fairly robust. Now, I've done some back of the envelope calculations. It was a very small envelope, so I didn't go into it that detail, but it looks like we would have payback in the order of a year 
for what we estimate as capital costs, maybe $150 million. And that's that's pretty robust when you think about other operations that have many have two or three years of payback for the initial capital investment. The other thing about where we are in New Brunswick, there are mills, existing mills in New Brunswick that are underutilized. And so it's theoretically possible that our operation could simply be a mining operation, small, small crushing mill, and then ship it to an existing uh, a, a small gr a grinding circuit, and then ship it to an existing mill for the remainder of the processing. Most, uh, most of those mills are in northern New Brunswick, and northern New Brunswick also has an export uh, port at Baldoon, which is being redeveloped and is being available for shipping. So everywhere we are, or everything we do in New Brunswick is very close to ocean shipping, roads, you know, Trans-Canada Highway goes within a few kilometers of our property. So the access is very good. So what's the game plan then? Are you, are you, are you guys planning to be drilling this summer? Do you need to drill? How, how, what, what does the roadmap look like, uh, assuming that you're able to go out there and raise the amount of money you need to do to, to get this thing moving? Well, we've already raised almost a million dollars of which about 700,000 will be spent in a drilling program, which is underway. We're about halfway through it. I expect it to be finished at the end of the month. We'll be drilling about 2,700 meters. Originally, there has been around 35 drill holes drilled in the project already. We know where all of those are. We have very good control of where they are. So when it comes to doing a resource, we can add those drill holes in with our own to increase the number and the density of drilling on the property. I think that that's an important thing to think about because, you know, it means that it's possible we would have a, re a resource calculation by the end of the year. We're, we're out there, of course, talking about raising some more money to do some more drilling, but we'll have drilled 2,700 meters probably by the end of June. I talked to the, you know, the challenge always with drilling is how long it takes for the results to come back from the lab. I talked to the lab yesterday and they told me to expect about two more weeks. Okay. Okay, that's uh, what they've been saying for a little while. But anyway, we won't go into that. Yeah. It's always a cha challenge waiting. In our case, which is a little bit different than, say, a gold deposit, we can see the mineralization. We know where it is. We've seen sections of massive stibnite uh, in our drilling. So we know we're going to get, or we, I mean, we're going to get some good assays because we know it's massive antimony in the drill, in the drilling that we have already. So we've drilled about, we're drilling now on our 12th drill hole. So we've drilled, we've drilled 12. We have about another five or six to go. Um, and that will help us trace out what we call the main zone. Again, the deposit's significant because it has, I think, three different zones of antimony mineralization. We're really focusing our attention on what we call the main zone, which is the, you know, the, the main part that's been known for a while. We also know that about, and that, the size of that is about 500 meters long. It averages about three to four meters wide, and we've traced it down over 200 meters. So doing a calculation, that gives you a pretty good volume. Um, we also know that about 500 meters south of our main zone, there's another zone of antimony mineralization that's only been drilled by a few drill holes, and that's pretty open. Also parallel to our main zone, there's another zone. It's a thinner zone, but it also has high-grade antimony, and we'll be tracing that. So not only do we have something in our main zone, which can turn into a resource, we have other exploration targets around on our property. So. I think something that I found interesting when we were chatting before about it is I actually went on to Grok, which is like ChatGPT, it's Elon's version of it, or Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I asked, what are the top antimony projects in the world, um, and or in the Western world, I should say. And uh, this pro the project that you have did come up as one of those top four. Um, I, I, how, just high, high level here, um, if, if I'm a retail investor sitting at home, I'm doing my homework, I'm doing my due diligence on antimony, does that sound about accurate? How, like, like, like how, how big is the universe of antimony projects that exist out there that are actually have a shot of 
Well, uh, basically, as I said before, everybody's focusing on the Stibnai project in Idaho. It's a large product and it, project, and it will produce a fair amount of antimony, assuming they can get that part of it to work, and they've, they've done some work. We've done some metallurgy on our stuff. We know we're going to get 95 to 98% recovery, so very good concentrate. The other projects in the world that are significant, the other one that's really significant is a project that's controlled by a company called Military Metals. Mm -hmm. That's in Slovakia. Again, that's a former gold mine which actually has some antimony. And they've been talking about uh, what they have there. And we don't exactly know what their resources are. And again, I'm not going to try to talk negatively about this, but the resources were actually done in what I would consider the Russian way. Mm -hmm. And what the Russians were, and uh, the, again, in the time it was the Soviet Union, what they were interested in was not what would be economic, but exactly how much was there down to the smallest minute detail. So their resources that they used are not 43-101 or JORC compliant or anything like that. So again, I don't want to say anything negative. It yeah. sounds like they have good resources there, but they need to do a lot of work to bring it up to speed. Those are the really the, the three R's. Those two are really the, the only ones I know. There are some other people, some other companies talking about the antimony that they have. There's a company that just made a press release about a bunch of projects that they picked up in the United States. Those are all grassroots exploration projects. Again, um, you know, really associated with gold mines, but some of them, one of the projects they picked up was called Antimony Valley, which I love the name. Um, so there is a little bit of that, but as far as sort of next stage development projects, they're, they're not many. They're not many in the world. All right, well, Jim, thanks very much for sitting down here today. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, I think that this is one of those names that if you're sitting at home and you're doing your homework on the antimony space, you got to keep an eye on. And uh, let's sit down and, and do this again after you guys get some drill results in so you can walk our, our audience through trying to understand them. Sure, absolutely. I, I, I would enjoy doing that, no problem. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.